Hello. Hello. How's and welcome to. Oh, well, I was going to do a little welcome, but there. Eh. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Right, well, there we go. It's all right. Uh, welcome to episode 28 of Guys Playing Games. Um, it's a bit of a different week for us here this week. Yeah, uh, it's, all, it's all gone a bit. It's well, it was. It's a bit peak tongue, isn't it? <laughs> well, it was, it was going to be slightly different because we've relocated to my house. But and now we're a man down. It's yeah. just us two holding the fort. Perry's Perry's unfortunately taken ill, so he's unable to join us. He's confined to his sick bed. He is a yeah. sick bed slash playing RuneScape. I'm sure from across <laughs> the room. I mean, I'm sure he'll be playing RuneScape well after his death. So you know. No, there's, there's, there's very yeah, few exactly. things be, that dude will be on his deathbed you know, like you know those little like portable <laughs> TVs you get in the hospital he'll just have like a laptop hooked into that or something and be playing RuneScape so <laughs> fully expect that so yeah, yeah things are going to be a little <clears throat> bit different this week so it's just us two who to yeah. shoot the shit and uh, yeah but I guess we'll start as normal shall we Edward yeah and never call me that again <laughs> <laughs> I, found, I found the limit now do not call you Edward <laughs> ever yeah. Um, so, what have you been playing this week? Yeah, that's the that's the question I was waiting. For. I was waiting for you to ask me. Oh, I had to ask the question. Okay. Yeah, so you, what, that's, that's what, the what have you been playing? What have I been playing? So this Ed. week, this week, um, I have been. So I did my little stream. I but I started started doing some Twitch streaming on a Sunday afternoon. Just yeah, I've you know, seen. You know, what better to do on a Sunday afternoon than there? Uh, Stream some Sunday, games. Sunday, right? You know, exactly, so. exactly, exactly. Um, and alongside my uh, usual PUBG um, uselessness, um, this week I actually tried something different, and I actually streamed a mobile game called Shadow Gun Legends. Um, so Shadow Gun Legends, I found it a week or so back. Oh, one of my cats. Oh, cat, cat cast. <laughs> Here we go. Hi, Sludge. You joining in? Hello. Oh, I need to get Bruce in here. He can come talk. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. That. That's. I hadn't anticipated. I hadn't accounted for cats making noises at all. So I saw special so, guest so, this week. Yeah, a special guest is Splodge. <laughs> right. He's just gonna sit and look at me and just probably meow at me some more. So what the hell? He did it the actually. He, he did this on my stream on Sunday. As soon as I started streaming, he came in. He's like, just trying to make his own celebrity. <laughs> yeah. it's like if I just drop in, like. I'll be a cat on the internet, it'll be great. I need to utilise him somehow. I don't know. He likes to jump up and sit on my lap, but only need... totally, totally make him an eight bit like eight bit cat. <laughs> yes. That's what needs to be done. Him and Pinky should have their own avatars. That is something we need to get Perry on. Yeah, definitely we'll get Perry um, on that. Right, before I was distracted by the cat. Um Shadow Gun Legends. It's a mobile game. I've been playing it for a week or so now, and it is essentially like a looter shooter FPS. In the, okay. in the vein of something like Destiny, so um, obviously scaled down somewhat, but it is a full on FPS. Oh, it is an FPS. Oh, yeah, no, right. I, was, I was about to say, is it actually an FPS? All oh, right, Cheer. very, very much so. Um, and it's really good. I'm really impressed with the control scheme they've got going on. So yeah. they've made some quite what on the face of it are quite sort of bold design decisions in terms of the controls they've basically to fire at enemies you just hold the cursor over them and it automatically okay. shoots so whilst that sounds like kind of lame or whatever it actually yeah, makes yeah. a lot of sense in the context of a mobile game because it's one less thing to kind of have to worry about tapping and stuff and I like the sound of that because, um, like, you've been playing Fortnite and PUBG Mobile, haven't you? Yeah. And like, and like the the shooting. Well, I haven't actually played PUBG Mobile yet, but I've played Fortnite. And for me, the shooting on that is really annoying because you have to like, yeah. tap anywhere. I know you like tap anywhere, but you have to like aim and then tap in a random spot. Yeah. And I find my hands are sliding all over the place. And yeah. It's not really that, so with, that with this so. having having the auto shooting, it means you can like retain full mobility. Right. Um, and now all the reloading is like completely automatic as well. You don't have to think about it. Like essentially, I think it kind of looks for breaks in the combat and automatically reloads. Or obviously, if your clip runs out, it automatically reloads. But it's it's quite intelligent on how it does it. That's good. Did really you ever nice. play? Did you ever play a game called? I think it was Nova. It was a it was a, it was a first person shooter on mobile. I can't mm. a, a long time ago. Like probably when iPhones first started to explode. 
But like, Doesn't thinking really back bell. to that, that sounds like the combat was pretty similar to, to that. I think there's like four versions of that game. It's like Nova 4 out right? there. Like it was semi-popular in the mobile okay. scene. Um, it sounds like the shooting on that, like that had really good gunplay for a game that's on a mobile. Um, so it sounds a lot like that. So that's, that's it's, it's interesting. I'll have to, I'll have, yeah. to I'll definitely have to download it and give it a go. It's it's definitely worth checking out. Sorry, Splodge has now jumped up onto my lap and his tail is whacking the microphone. It's, all, <laughs> it's all going we very hear, well. We can't hear the, the smack of the microphone. That's, that's good. Um, um, yeah, so what else have I got to say? So there's um, one thing that I kind of... I, the thing that struck me initially, like when you load into the first mission, I, I was literally like, wow. Like, this, it looks phenomenal for a mobile game. Like, visually. Yeah. I think... I'm right in You're saying, on an iPhone X as well, right? Yeah, so, so I mean, that probably helps a little bit. Um, I, th <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Um, I think it's running on Unity, but I, I, I'm going to oh, say okay. I'm going to say it's running on Unity, but I'm not 100% certain that's true, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, and like, I, so I've been playing it at like at lunchtime at work and stuff, and like whoever's sat next to me is always like, "What? What's that? It looks amazing!" For like for a mobile yeah. game, so like it's. It's very, yeah. It's visually Does very it impressive. That? I mean, I ha obviously I haven't played it. I literally know nothing of it. Obviously, other than what you've kind of semi said in 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 text and stuff. But like, yeah. does it have those caveats of a lot of mobile games? Because that's the thing where I get disconnected. <clears throat> it's like, like for instance, if you played Tekken Mobile yet, like mm. everything seems to be based on character cards and stuff like that. Even a lot of shooters do it. Like, no, there's, there's, is there stuff like that or is it like a full on no it's normal like experience? loot or shooter you get yeah. like weapon and armor drops and missions there are holograms that are definitely not engrams that you have to go get decoded yeah from like the dude in the pub like little pub town place yeah um, and yeah it's, it's yeah, not you, really so the, it's not really like bogged down with like the, the standard like mobile no, no, I haven't. No, no, I haven't. I haven't come across that at all. Like even oh, so, good. even like so. There's you have like um, like limited inventory slots. I can't. I think you're limited initially to like sixteen, and even with those, like because you're just equipping the best gear all the time. Certainly at the moment, like I wasn't yeah. finding like I was running out of slots because I was just selling the stuff I wasn't using. Um, whether that will be more of an issue in the end game, but then certainly at the moment, any like real money purchase um, boosts your inventory up to ninety six slots. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah. like, I, so it's I, more like a consolely game experience. It feels like, it feels like very much. Oh, yeah, actually, that reminds me. Yeah, it is based on Unity because I was thinking like, if they did want to port it to console, it would be very easy for them to do because Unity is obviously a cross platform. Engine. Yeah, cross engine, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it is full on. I say, yeah, it's, that's, it's that's a full on awesome. looter shooter oh, FPS. Like, uh, there's. Yeah. You, you go on missions, you earn XP, like, you have a gear score that, like, increases as you equip better gear. Um, you, like, level up, and, like, there's, like, a huge, like, ability tree for, like, customizing, like, like your sort of play style with so you can have two like um active abilities and then there's a whole bunch of passives to unlock there's like three yeah. three skill trees and then in between each skill trees there's like a couple of mini like hybrid skill trees that you unlock stuff so like the skill the skill page is still i'm still finding it quite overwhelming the amount of stuff that's on there um so there's quite a lot of depth on that um on top of like the campaign there's like um a campaign obviously like a main story sort of campaign -y type thing yeah um that you, gives you like the highest kind of xp and loot gains and stuff but then to boost you up in between levels there's like these little missions they're they're termed operations in the game and they're kind of like the patrols from destiny they're like little quick like go to this area kill all the dudes oh, okay. like, go to this quick yeah like go to this area kill like a high value target yeah. Type thing. Um, so they're just little quick things that you load into, and then there's like proper like side like sort of almost little side story side missions as well. On top yeah. of that, there's a whole PvP aspect. There's one one v ones and four v fours. 
Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I was literally just going to say, is there any multiplayer? Is there co-op as well, yeah. or is it just PvP yeah, so, stuff? Yeah, there's, there's one, 1v1s, 4v4s, then there's a three-player, like, um, wave-based arena thing. So oh, okay, awesome, yeah. There's a couple, uh, there's two, I've only unlocked the first one, the bronze one. Um, so it's like five waves, um, which gets really bloody difficult, actually, um, <laughs> with like a, a massive boss at the end. And then there's another thing, there's like a kind of dungeon... I think it's like a raid esque, like little dungeon thing, which again, which is like a multi person co op. I'm not sure how many players. I think it's, it might be three or four people as well. So it's very, very Destiny esque in the. Yeah, a lot, a lot of. A lot of the writing about it, I think, I mean, one of the thing, reasons I downloaded it originally, I read an article and it's like, this is basically Destiny for mobile. And I was like, all right, I'll check that out. And it's like... Yeah, got nothing wrong with that, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and, you know, it's it's not far off, to be fair. They've, they've definitely taken a lot of cues from Destiny. The, the kind of world design actually playing it reminds me a lot of Halo. There's the kind okay. of... The enemy who are the, the torment. Um, they're kind of ship sort of interior like the kind of tile set for their kind of ships and stuff like it's like you could be forgiven for thinking you're not like you're playing a halo game it's it's very it's very kind of it feels very halo inspired it's like that appeals to me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if any, we've discovered anything over the last couple of weeks is that how much i love halo yeah. so I'll, uh, yeah and again like, I, I, I keep coming back to the fact like this is a mobile game it's like it's yeah, it's, it's nuts. It seems are... like the scene at the minute on for mobile games, <clears throat> and this is the thing that I, I'm liking is because the, my disconnect with playing games on my phone was how much they were very much a, a mobile game. Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? yeah, I, absolutely. Like typically, like you know, in years past, like mobile games are seen as like you know, your Candy Crushes and Farm Bills yeah. and Clash of Clans and all that sort of stuff. But now it's like the line between console and mobile is really starting to blur i mean obviously as you mentioned I mean, like fortnite, yeah. yeah fortnite and PUBG have both brought out mobile games i'd swear I mean, to god fortnite more so because obviously you've actually got that legitimate cross-platform like yeah you can play with yeah. console players that's, on that. yeah that's so, ridiculous <clears throat> um so that gap is like closing so much now and it's, it's awesome to see these experiences that are yeah. more like a full-on gaming experience rather than these little bite-sized things i i i've I found it, even though they were they're meant to be that way, I'd actually find it more difficult to put any time or attention into a game where it's like, you know, uh, like I say, like Tekken or something like that, where you've got you've got to get these character cards. You're not actually really playing the yeah. game. They've kind of they've almost you know. kind of like just looked at other mobile games and looked at the kind of freemium model and been like, how can we work that into our game rather than how can we make our game better suited to mobile. Yeah that's it yeah um which is uh, what these other people are now starting to do um i mean ob obviously you know shadow gun is um free to play um yeah. but as far as like i haven't really i couldn't even tell you what you buy with real world money like it hasn't they certainly don't like hit you in the face with it yeah. um I think you can buy I think it's all cosmetic crates like they have so on top of like the armor and the weapons and stuff they have stickers that you can apply to like your gear so you get a sticker that you can apply to like your shoulder pads and your guns and stuff oh, that's and cool. then yeah. there's like paints as well so you can you can color armor and weapons with the like spray the like spray paints so yeah like weapon they're essentially like weapon and armor skins but they're yeah paint i think i think that's kind of the extent of the cosmetics um oh and there's um... i like it when it's limited to that though like, <clears throat> like the only thing you have to pay for is that cosmetic stuff yeah. and it's there, there if are... you want it if not then you can still just play and enjoy it as much as anyone else yeah there are actually a bunch of cosmetic slots but i've only unlocked a couple of hats so i've got a couple of oh, different okay. hats to try out but there's like you can unlock a much kind of like Fortnite with like you can unlock like backpacks and like stuff like you know just cosmetic bits just as a, yeah. a visual like customization thing um so yeah, yeah. i mean sounds, I'm, sounds I'm, good i'm curious and to see what happens when you kind of hit the level cap so i'm about where am i i think i'm level 15 at the moment and the cap is 20 yeah um 
So very Destiny again, to want that level yeah. 20 cap. But the kind of, <laughs> the weird thing is with this, like your gear score is kind of in effect from level one. Oh. So your gear score oh, is okay. kind of working independent of your level. Right. In a, in a kind of way. They're kind of both happening at the same time. That's, that's very similar to, uh, obviously we talked about Vermintide the other week. Vermintide's mm. like that, where you're you, your character is still level, leveling, but you're still getting a hero score, which is gear score, essentially. Yeah. So they're both you're progressing both as you're going along so yeah it sounds very similar to that sort yeah. of style so fair enough sounds like it's worth checking out I'm going to give it a download when we come off of here I think actually so yeah. um, should do I keep the... been telling you guys to, to try it out yeah I, I, I've literally been so busy the last few days <laughs> I, I've literally lost completely lost my mind over the last <laughs> few days all the travelling I, I, driving up and down the fucking country essentially I was just completely dead the last few days so I'll, I'll, I'll check it out this week so I haven't really had time to play anything myself actually so, yeah, what, what have you been playing as? Uh, I mean obviously last week I don't really want to talk about it too much I've played uh, I've been playing a lot more for Far Cry 3 oh, Far Cry 3 my god <laughs> from Far back Cry in time. 4 that's how, that's how I've lost my mind I've, I'm <laughs> talking about games from four years ago or longer yeah um, Yeah. No, I've been playing Far Cry 5 and this evening actually I've playing For Honor which is something wow. I just touched back on. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, yeah. See, uh, I was I was interested in For Honor originally. I don't maybe the beta you, put you, me you off. You never played it at all. I played the I played the beta, but then I never okay. got around to the See, full when it, version. When it first came out, I played it a lot, um, and I really enjoyed it. It was just kind of one of those things, though. Is something else came out? I don't know, probably about a month after it was released, and then it got put down, and I just never went back to it. But they've uh, they've they're on season two now, I think it is. Um, there's a lo load of new heroes and things like that, none of which I have because they're all in the season pass. Um, yeah. But a lot of them look really good, and a couple of them kicked my ass online earlier on as well. So, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, nothing's really changed with that. I mean, if it, I mean, obviously it's a bit late in the day. I'm sure anyone who's listening has ever played it. It's it's still the same game. It's still very pretty. Um, still fucking hard as well. <laughs> um, it's oh, definitely yeah. a game you have to master. Yeah, I, I remember from playing the beta, it was <clears> it was. But I was quite intrigued by the control scheme because it felt quite unique at the time. It, it is, it's because it's, it is, it's deceiving because when it came out, it was, it, it looked very like not hack and slashy, but in that kind yeah. of vein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's really not. It's really, it's a fight. At the core of it, it is just a fighting game, um, and it is just about learning combos and things like that. Um, obviously, it's just got a very unique uh, blocking system and. and Obviously, the parrying system and stuff like that is all very um, different to anything else that's out, really. I mean, yeah, because uh, everything is basically one on one. I mean, like, like when you're online, you're meant to have honor, which is like the etiquette in the lobby. So if it's, you're doing right, a two v right. two, if your partner kills the other guy, um, you know, on guy on the other team first, then he's meant to leave you two alone while you, you the other two guys are having a fight. <laughs> um, How often like does that etiquette. happen? All the time, actually, oh, okay. people get really fucking pissed off. On the well, I, I haven't played with the console community. I've only played on PC, and the PC community tends to be a little bit more mature anyway at times. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's online. It's very much a thing. I, I, I must admit, earlier on, I was in a fight, and some dudes really fucked me off. So I uh, broke the honor um, <laughs> because he killed my partner, and it was a one-on-one -on -one after. But as he was finishing his execution, I was laying into him before he could even finish it. <laughs> Did so you do I, uh, the honourable yeah. thing and fall on your sword afterwards? Right? Well, he actually he came out the next round and fucking destroyed me, so it didn't really <laughs> matter after that. He got his revenge anyway. Nice. Um, so that taught that taught me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's like it's a legit thing. Like having honour on that game is like people get fucking livid. Um, <laughs> like in the chat, if you break honour, they get really pissed off. That's kind of nice when to know, first... actually. Yeah, it is. I mean, when we first started playing it, I had no idea that was a thing. Like just because I hadn't really done a lot of reading online about it I was just playing it like that was yeah, it yeah yeah um, we were in a lobby and some dude really kicked off at me and my friend Ash one day and he was he was like uh, he's going oh, you got, why haven't you got fucking honour like you meant to fucking wait and all this shit and he's going <laughs> shit and we were like what we didn't even know that was a thing we just thought we were trying to fucking win you know like he was like no that's not how it goes so yeah <laughs> so it's a real thing but it's, it's enjoyable still I really enjoy it it's a good game it's, it's tough if you're into fighters, then not like your traditional fighter, but it's it's a game of skill, definitely. Right? Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. 
It is definitely a game of game of skill. Like I can you see, can't like just run in and launch at each other because that's just that, yeah. you're just gonna get fucked up basically. And like one, I, with someone who knows what they're doing. I can see players who've like who've like really mastered the sort of control schema and stuff like being really quite dominant and it's like well it's, it's it was funny actually saying that because obviously playing earlier on i haven't played it in probably about a year i reckon like yeah. since it, it, it was about this time year? yeah it's about this time last year yeah. at this time last year so it's probably around this time last year when i was i was playing it a lot i haven't really played it since then and uh obviously going online earlier on playing against guys who know how to do like these one hit kill moves and stuff like that and they're just pouncing on me I'm like, what what the fuck like how like i've completely forgotten how to dodge and all sorts so i started getting my bearings a bit near the end and we we're winning yeah. that but yeah so <laughs> so yeah start playing been playing a smidge of that this evening uh want to play a bit more of that later in the week but far cry 5 just to just round oh, yeah. off my bit with that i just want to touch on that again because uh, obviously, I praised it last week. Still want to praise it. Still, still, uh, still yeah. very much enjoying it, and would recommend people picking it up at some point. But the only thing that's really doing my head in, and I've noticed it more the more time I put into it, is that everything in that game is so fucking angry. Like, you can, <laughs> really? it's, yeah, it's really annoying because you'll be in a car and you'll be driving down these main roads because, like, driving through the woods and stuff like that, even on an ATV is quite fucking dangerous you're just like launching over hills and crashing <laughs> and dying and all sorts um, so driving down the main road to like get to an objective and obviously like these hillbilly people are all over the place and it, you can not have alerted anyone and they just kick off like they're just, con it's just <laughs> constantly kicking off like everybody just wants to kill you and it gets really frustrating because you'll be driving somewhere and they're shooting you and like you haven't got any med packs or something and then all of a sudden you're fucking like dead waiting to be resuscitated it's like what the fuck <laughs> so everyone like, chill out to... yeah exactly it's like I, I can't be bothered to like kill you because i'm trying to get to my destination but like you have, you have to kill everything essentially because otherwise you're just going to end up in a gunfight <laughs> and for me it's a little bit frustrating because it's like surely they should have worked it into the game that if you haven't triggered like an yeah. attack and not everything should attack you because it, literally everything attacks you like I get that they're enemies but like why the fuck do they like I just look like a normal dude in the yeah. game like why does everyone know who I am and why does everyone decide they need to shoot at me as soon as they see me <laughs> also like, from from like a game point of view like you need those lulls in the combat to allow you to explore the map and like it's take like yeah. Like, like, yeah, it's like, like I, I was going to say, it's literally like Assassin's Creed is like the comparison to it because obviously you have the same sort of like bar system where it tells you if you've been detected or not. But like in that game, if you're on Origins, if you're running down the road on that and you run past some guards, they don't attack you, right? You can just walk past them. Yeah. Nothing happens. Nothing happens, which yeah, is great. Yeah. Unless you go in like a restricted area or something. Well, in this game, it doesn't matter. If you see an enemy, they're fucking coming for you. They're going to beeline <laughs> for you immediately. Like, especially if you're in a car, they will shoot the fuck out of your car. And it's, it's really annoying. Um, that is literally my only gripe with that game. At the moment, anyway. I've, I've only put... Because, obviously, since last week's episode, I've, I've been away and stuff like that. Yeah. I've only had four, four full hours in the game. Um, so, most of my time's been on this latter end of the <clears> week. And that's what I've noticed. And it's just, it's just like, chill the fuck out. Just give me that lull... To just get to my next objective and stop fucking shooting at me and wasting my ammo and health packs and stuff like that. So yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because it was really annoying. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's all, all I've got this week. Yeah, I know some some friends of mine um, on Facebook. I've been seeing them posting about Far Cry Five. They seem to be having a good time with it. So yeah, I mean, it seems to be being generally fairly well received. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, definitely. Like I said, it's my only gro. To be fair, it's not even. It is a bit of a gripe, but I can live with it. But I wish it wasn't like that. Yeah. If they patched it to stop that happening, I think like game, that smidge better for me. Yeah, so. I'm thinking back. Like, I think f f I feel like Far Cry Four was kind of similar, but maybe not yeah. not quite to the extreme. Like, certainly, like the enemy, like the enemy militia would obviously attack you on site wherever you were. But yeah, I guess if there's a... it just feels like it's more constant on game yeah um i mean like i said i didn't really play far cry 4 i played far cry 3 um but i don't remember it being as consistent with stuff just trying to fucking kill you all the time <laughs> i don't remember any game where like stuff is trying to kill you that much in an open world game like this anyway have you seen any like bears? I said, you need that lull. 
Sorry? Have you seen any bears yet? I've seen lots of bears. I've, yeah. I've got Cheeseburger the bear. He's now my friend um, <laughs> who wanders around with me and my pet cougar. That's my nice. team at the minute. It's me, a cougar, and a bear. And we just go into these camps and just that fucking seems, kill everything. I mean, as teams so. go, that seems like a pretty good one. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> to be fair, it's quite bad having two animals because they do get down quite quickly because obviously everything's got fucking guns and they haven't, so they need to get right <laughs> in the action. So you, just train you, them. you do find yourself reviving them a lot. Train so. the bear up to, you know, wield an AK or something. He yeah. needs, yeah, I was going to say, he needs like a fucking minigun on his back. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really good. It's totally fucking ridiculous. So, yeah, but it's enjoyable. Cool. So that's what we've been playing this week, guys. I guess uh, probably do some news, huh? Like, yeah, we'll, news. Move, we'll move. There's quite a lot to talk about this week, actually. Yeah, I was going to say, do, do, should we blitz through some stuff? I know you wanted to talk about GDC a bit. I'll uh, pop, pop that in in our little planner. Yeah. Um, do, if you want to well, kick do, us off with some well, stuff no. from that, or well, should we look at? Well, let's look at the uh, the very topical, if slightly a few days late. April Fools okay, roundups yeah. that you that you put in. Um, I must admit, yeah. I haven't. I wasn't. I don't know. April Fools kind of just passed me by a bit this this year. I didn't really notice a lot yeah, of. Yeah, it, it it did me a bit. If anything, I saw most of this stuff after the fact. So yeah, uh, yeah I did. I did it, see it like some weird shit was going on on the on the day. So the the only uh, the only big really big one that I saw um, Lego did a good one on Facebook where they put up an advert for. Um, uh, they're releasing a, a Lego vacuum cleaner that automatically sorts out all your bricks into like colours and shapes. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Which oh, is wow. that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I didn't see that. There's, there's probably loads of stuff. Didn't yeah. see the, the one that caught my interest. I thought was pretty funny. Was uh, Razor said they they were releasing something called Project Venom, um, yeah. which was basically their energy drink, which which improve like game performance so if you drink <laughs> drink you could like click the mouse like a hundred times faster <laughs> and stuff like that and it was, like, it was like Bane but for gamers essentially <laughs> so it probably which hence the namesake I'm sure because it was called Venom V2 so I think they are right. giving a little nod maybe to uh, Bane from Batman there with that I imagine which uh, I don't know if people can realise there's lots of Batman mm. stuff in here so anything Batman I'm like oh yeah that's cool that's cool with me <laughs> Um, nice. Have you had a look through any of the stuff though? Any of the get the gaming based stuff though? I was like linking. Um, I, I, I mean, I was kind of flicking through it. Um, like another one was uh, Pokemon Go. Oh, yeah, they just... were releasing an eight bit version. <laughs> like, like what the fuck? Like okay, it, 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 you oh, have to laugh. Nice. Some of the, some of the stuff that happens in the world of gaming, you have to wonder if like how many people they actually get with this stuff. Oh yeah, um, the one we were t there's the one we were talking about earlier with um, was it Path of Exile? Yeah, Anna announcing a yeah. battle royale mode. Announcing a battle royale mode. So yeah, like top down action RPG with a battle royale mode. <laughs> like what? Uh, what, what the fuck? Um, uh, Guerrilla Games said they were releasing body pillows, which has got like these really awkward fucking. Um, these really awkward body pillows with characters from Horizon Zero Dawn, like in their like their armor and stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If, like, it's just uh, weird. so people can see what I'm talking about. Like, uh, mm. I'll point it to it. There you go, body pillows like that. Like, wow. What the fuck? Like, okay, you can have a handy dandy handsome man from Horizon to hug at night when you're <laughs> lonely and cold. That's not weird at all. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Nvidia, Nvidia announced a, a gaming academy as well. I imagine that one was actually probably believed by a lot of people. Actually, yeah, I mean that doesn't sound um, that far fetched. It doesn't, especially like in 2018. Like that's totally a believable thing. Like we've got yeah. esports arenas and stuff now. Like I, I'm pretty sure we could have an academy for learning how to game. So yeah, I, I'd, I'd potentially fall for that. I, I like <laughs> their tagline for that as well because obviously their tagline being the way it's meant to be played. Whereas this was the way it's meant to be learned. <laughs> nice. Right. I see what they did there. That's good. Uh, yeah, it's, cl it's clever, right? Uh, what else have we got that was ridiculous? Oh, that was it. Uh, CC Project Red were hiring a DOGE. So we're looking for a Doge uh, <laughs> to come in and work for them, which stood for wherever I had it in front of me two seconds ago. What's that stand for? 
uh, it was like directing of uh, director of gaming engineering or something. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, nice. It's like, it's like fucking yeah, you know, that was it. Direct designer of game environments, and and the trailer they put out for this job advertisement was like a dude with a dog's head, like like sat at a <laughs> desk, like checking emails and shit, like nice. something weird and going on. Um, so yeah, I think that was like the probably some of the best stuff. Uh, is there anything else you spotted on April Fools at all? Uh, I say no. It, it, I say it kind of passed me by a little bit. Um, oh, that was that was another one. The PlayStation board game. PlayStation <laughs> board game. And they said, uh, "Ever wished for your PlayStation gaming experience was a little less digital and a whole lot more analog? With all new anima- <laughs> non-animated graphics and zero AI, PlayStation the board game will let you experience the mild thrills of moving pieces of cut car- pieces on cardboard." Who needs a headset when you can just shout angrily at your friends across the table? <laughs> and then it goes, it boasts the features of a non-4K get resolution game board, pens and paper to draw your trophies, rule books, six of them in fact, intense <laughs> local multiplayer for up to four players, large and small dice, so many dice. So <laughs> yeah, the fucking PlayStation the board game. Nice, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so April Fools. So if, if any of you got caught by anything on April Fools, please do tweet us and just <clears throat> you know just let us know how gullible you actually are so tweet yeah. at guys playing G's. Oh, there was a there was one more actually that um i saw there was uh my uh the old company i used to work for wired productions um little indie publisher that they are oh, okay and um, they they put one out they were they put out an advert for they were releasing uh a game based on brexit um, a game based on brexit <laughs> yeah, Bre- i think it was called brexit the referendum or something um <laughs> Um, yeah, a lot a lot of people on their Facebook page were very uh, intrigued by it and were wanting to know yeah. what, it, what it consisted of. And uh, so yeah, that, I can imagine stuff. people fall of it again. Though that's not too far fetched. Yeah, people you know? p- people will make games for all sorts of weird stuff. Yeah, so, exactly. So. Like game. Do you remember? I think Game, the company Game, released that shopping simulator one year. Like that was a yeah. thing. Oh yeah, yeah. So we can have shopping simulator. Absolutely, we can have yeah. Brexit simulator. Yeah. You know. Oh so, yeah, April Fools! Yeah. I can't, I can't say I was uh, gullible enough to fall for anything. I have to say yeah. so myself. I, um, did um, actually? Did that. did you notice? Did Blizzard do anything this year? Blizzard are usually quite good with April Fools. Yeah, Blizzard but... normally do good stuff. Actually, do you know what? Everything I've read post uh, sort of roundup of uh, April Fools, I haven't seen anything from them. Actually, I'm just, like scrolling through myself now. Let's have a look. Uh, Too busy in the giant money pits to worry about April Fools anymore. Yeah, no. Oh, they did something for Hearthstone. You can now play Hearthstone with a new language option, Nerglish. It's that la 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 language Murlocs. that Murlocs okay. speak. <laughs> 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 oh, nice. Okay, so yeah, they did do something, but it was yeah. something. But there cool. Was, there's so much stuff. There was literally just that we could go on all day about yeah, games yeah. That called April Fools. So there, there were some highlights that I, I noticed anyway. <clears throat> um, right. Okay. Something we're both probably very interested in. PUBG um, announced a yes. new 4v... Well, I say announced. It's just been announced for a little while, but the 4v4... 4v4? 4v4 what the fuck am I on about? 4x4 four four map. Yeah, the small map. So, a code, tiny, teeny map. Codenamed Savage, which I thought was pretty... That's apt, right? Yeah. <laughs> given, <laughs> given... Yeah, so when it, it came out on... Was it... It was Monday or Tuesday it went up. Yeah, Monday or Tuesday. It was, it was I think it was late week, yeah. late Monday our time, so it was kind of early Tuesday yeah. other people's time. Um, and I was watching one of the TSM guys playing it on Tuesday. Um, it's, um, it's, the, it's still very much work in progress. There's a lot of kind of buildings with missing textures and stuff. But the kind of the yeah. geometry's there, but the kind of it needs a bit of work, sort of thing. Um, it is much more claustrophobic than the other maps we're used to. Um, by I mean, I was telling you earlier, sort of by the by the kind of three four minute mark, they were down to like forty odd people out of a hundred. So yeah. it's the 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 initial kind of drop is like crazy hectic. If you don't find a gun as soon as you land, you're basically dead. You're fucked. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is insane how quickly like the number count just halves. I mean, th- this is something I've spoke about quite a bit on the podcast. Podcast on the podcast <laughs> um, when we spoke about PUBG is that my gripe of it was how long it takes how to slow get it is, the yeah. action. So for me, this is like a dream come yeah. true. I haven't signed up for the test yet. I need to sign up for it to give it a go. But for me, this is like a dream come true for that game because yeah. I like to be able to. 
I, I have short attention span. I just want to get in and I want to shoot. I think, I, yeah, I just think it would be nice to kind of mix it up because, like, as much yeah, as I definitely. do, I do enjoy the the, the standard PUBG experience to yeah. have have this like quicker, much more action orientated, like really frenetic kind of mode especially it, if you just like some, sometimes you just fancy a quick game you might exactly, have got 20 exactly. minutes to spare and think I just want to jump in and jump out but yeah. with the main game you can't really especially if you, you you're lucky or get through the first few dudes to kill Yeah, it, you know you could be playing for an hour yeah. so you can't do that whereas with this you know it gives you that option yeah and it's back to being it's a lot more sort of undergrowthy trees bushes hills it's quite a lot of yeah, hills think, it's quite hilly and yeah, very jungly. They heeded a bit of the response to the uh, desert map. Yeah, obviously. Miramar. Yeah, being, yeah, Miramar, being very open. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, I mean, you played it on my PC. If you yeah, I mean, that's know. the only time I've played it, obviously, because yeah. it hasn't made it to Xbox yet, so I haven't really experienced the, the full joys of, like, no cover. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah, the joys. Like, just massive swathes of, like, open desert to try and run through without being spotted. Um, I mean, again, it's 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 it was one of that map was one of those things. If you know, it's a bit of diversity. But then, like, what made the game, I think, was uh, obviously the cover and the way that the game played on that original map. Yeah. So obviously, this time round, they were like, "Oh shit, maybe we like, should like stick to that formula yeah. because that's what made us in the first place." Yeah, but then, so, twi yeah, twisting it by making it smaller and just cramming the same yeah. number of people in. Um, yeah. I mean, one one of the things I took away from watching it, like having said about like needing to find a gun like pretty asap um weapons seem to be quite plentiful certainly on the the sort of you know like the named sort of location areas like they seem to be littered with weapons yeah um i mean obviously i think this is um a bit of a response to fortnite as well obviously fortnite's sort of leading the charge a little bit at the moment isn't it yeah so absolutely uh, and obviously we're, again we've discussed that a lot uh, with how much quicker that game is and obviously how much smaller the map is on that yeah. um, so you know they had to pull something out I, I can't imagine this will take that I imagine this will they'll try and get the turnaround for this on console pretty quick as well um, I, I really hope so so I'd, yeah I'd love yeah. to get my hands on it yeah so yeah I'd like to say I haven't actually had a chance to delve into it myself I haven't even watched the, I haven't actually watched the footage of it I've only just uh, sort of read about it and, and uh, you know had what you were telling me about the streams yeah. you've watched and stuff I like say, that yeah, so I was so... watching watching one of the TSM guys he's, he's actually so it's a, one of the players he's called Vis um, yeah. he's actually I think he announced I think it was only last week that he's actually quit the competitive squad to go full time streamer so he's still oh. he's still affiliated with TSM but he's now full time stream um, oh, ra fair. rather than as part of the team um, which is quite a surprise because I think he was like their, one of their shot callers so oh, really? yeah it's going to be quite interesting to see how they it's a bit of a blow for them then yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah so, like... no, I'll try I'll try and uh, I'll try and get a go on it uh, before next week so I can actually give us a bit more of a in, in depth yeah, uh, cool. chat about it just to you know give viewers a bit of an idea of uh, viewers listeners a bit of an idea of what it plays like um, so I'll try and do that before next week Cool. Right, so uh, that's PUBG. Uh, what else we got? Uh, broke today. Uh, we can breeze over this pretty quickly. Uh, that... The new Spider-Man game. Yep, nice. Got a release date earlier today, does September look... the seventh. Looks very nice. Gotta say, it does does look very nice. It's and very I'm fluid. A... Yes, it got... <laughs> I'm happy that it is a, a full open world as well. Uh, obviously, you know, that's I think that was confirmed a little while back as well. But it was further confirmed because Game Informer are doing like a month long expose on it essentially and they talk about traversing oh, okay, right. yep. and, and they've played the opening mission and stuff like that so there'll be a load of content hitting the internet I'm sure over the next 3-4 weeks that they're covering it um, so yeah but no it looks it looks fantastic um, I love Spidey, Spidey's like my number 2 behind Batman so like for me can't wait okay. it's gonna be sublime and, and they confirmed the other, the other suits as well actually. that was confirmed so you can actually you actually create you suits changed... in the game. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how it's <clears> going to work. But from what I was reading earlier on today, is that you actually, well, I say create them. I don't know if you have to get like certain components or whatever to make mm. different suits or whatever. So, but you can change suits. There is a little snippet of the classic suit in in a small snippet of footage the game before more have already put out. So you can spot that. So okay. You, so like, so Iron Spider is going to be in there as well. I should imagine. 
coming off the I'd back of Infinity War. I'd imagine so, yeah. I imagine, yeah. I imagine it'll be all... So I imagine you'll be able to make the black suit and stuff like that. I imagine anything that's fairly iconic will probably be in the game. Yeah, that's pretty so, cool. So for me, I hope it just goes back to... I mean, did you play, like, Spider-Man 2 and stuff like that on, on PS2? Um... No, I, I I say I'm very late to the PlayStation. PS4 is my first first Sony console. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, true. Um, did you have you ever played any of the older Spidey games at all? Uh, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, not, not to my knowledge. No. Well, anyway, like Spider Man Two was like a fantastic open world game, and that was kind of the peak of the Spider Man games franchise. Like it didn't really get right. any better than that. Um, so it'd be nice, uh, and obviously Insomniac. You know they're a pretty renowned developer, um, so fingers crossed this time around we actually get a good Spider-Man game. I played yeah. Lego Marvel that had Spider-Man in it. Does that count? <laughs> that that does count. I'd say that count because he swings properly and everything yeah. like that. Yeah, no, yeah. I remember. It. I remember having a good time with him in that. that was, uh... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so, so that's that. Anything else you want to touch on? Let me get. Well, let me just. Uh, Talk, talk about the uh, this GDC stuff quickly. So, yeah, okay, cool. GDC was uh, uh, on the other week. This doesn't have the dates on it, which is really helpful. Um, <laughs> it was on very recently, let's say. Uh, it was a whole yeah. bunch of stuff talked about. I'm just going to kind of skim o- over this because it's all, you know, well, yeah, that's it's a, a ga- game that. developer conference. It's, it's much more much more t- techy than I can probably deal with uh, or, or understand, rather. That's uh, probably a better way of saying it. Um, there's a lot of talk around AIs. Um, um, EA's got a uh, sort of what they call for search for extraordinary experiences division, which is like a top secret uh-huh. EA division, uh, and how revealed a self-learning what they call a self-learning agent that is capable of playing Battlefield One. Oh so yeah, they, I saw about this actually. That's, so they, yeah, they have an oh. AI that can play Battlefield One, um, which yeah. is, is the, one of the reasons they say they're doing this is for like a QA testing like angle um, because it will okay. help them to sort of test games better because they'll be able to set it off doing stuff and also they'll be able to tell it to do like specific things and like leave it running and like you know test out all kinds of different scenarios. Well, save man hours as well. Exactly, right? exactly. Um, um, what else are they doing? So, yeah, so this search yes. for extraordinary experiences, which acronyms nicely to seed. Um, mm-hmm. They've um, also they're also working on some advanced lightning lighting techniques, which is you know, so sort of new rendering technology. Um, but yeah, a lot of talk on AI stuff. Um, Unity had a little keynote thing where they announced a partnership with Universal Studios to um, do. They set up a thing called the Universal Universal Game Dev Challenge. Um, okay. So game developers are challenged to create a game concept based off one of Universal's um, IPs, essentially. Um, there's specific. They have a pool of five specific IPs that they can pick from: um, Back to the Future, Battlestar Galactica, Jaws. DreamWorks, Voltron, Legendary Defender, uh, or Turok. Um, All right. So yeah, so yeah, any game devs can kind of choose to pitch a game on one of those properties, oh. and the winning studio will be rewarded with the opportunity to turn it into a, a actual product and get two hundred and fifty k. Holy um, fucking shit! That's big. <clears throat> yeah, it's really there's, cool. There's some serious like titles and name yeah. value in so there's, like, there's some yeah if somebody comes up with like an awesome back to the future game idea we could see an amazing yeah, back, to the, back to the future game, game like, which would fuck, be yeah imagine like some sort of open world back to the future game where you're bombing around on hoverboards and like back to the future yeah. online like you know <laughs> back to the future online everybody gets a delorean and gets the yeah. fucking travel time and space that'd be incredible oh um, shit yeah, no, that's, yeah. that's huge actually. Well, who, who knows we, we might even oh, sorry, see a new you, <laughs> Sorry, um, yeah, we might even see a new new Turok game. I mean, if they're, if they're putting be... putting that up for uh, yeah, for opening that up for uh, ideas, then who knows? That would be fantastic because obviously the last Turok game we actually got was the one on three hundred and sixty, right? Yeah, I'm gonna say yes. 
I'm pretty sure it was. <laughs> and that, I actually really liked that game. <clears throat> and then they never did a sequel, and there's never been done anything since. So it'd be nice to see Turok come back, actually. I know, um, I know that I think is it Turok 1 and 2 was recently added to backwards compatibility on Xbox One. Yeah, Something yeah, like... they re- they re released it. Uh, yeah. They did like a HD version of, of both those games. So, um, what else they were got? fantastic games. Just saying. Um, skip over. Let's not talk about. So that. something I just wanted to touch on as yeah. well that I was skimming through, and I meant to. I was wanted to talk about it the other week, but we didn't have a chance. Just really quickly, um, is obviously Epic have been showing their realistic yes. human models, <clears throat> um, which is all based on ray tracing, which is like a yeah. big new um, revelation in games, essentially, because yeah. they can actually do ray tracing in real time which is something that could yeah. be done so it's like actual realistic lighting yeah um, so for those they're... those those listening watching that aren't aware so ray tracing has been around for a long long time in sort of 3d graphics but typically you required like insanely powerful computers to do it it's like you know so like all the pixar films and stuff use ray tracing like rendering yeah. But like the computational power used to sort of generate like a Pixar film is like you know a room full of servers. Yeah. Um, so the yeah, fact that we're, we're talking getting it done on a home PC essentially. Yeah, which um, is crazy. Yeah, and if it, if none of you know anything about it, just give it a Google. There's loads of demonstrations from GDC and things like that, which uh, uh, obviously Epic have shown off. Uh, EA showed off some ray tracing stuff as well, I believe, with Star Wars. Yeah. Was that that, part? that was EA was. who did that, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. They, they own the rights to the games. So I'm pretty sure it was EA. Either way, some Star Wars stuff was shown off. Um, yeah. And yeah, the, 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 there's a demo of like a woman talking that yeah. Epic had released, and it is disgustingly realistic. If you yeah. pause the video, it legit looks like a real human being. Yeah, it's 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 one of those things. It's like it's so close to being real but you can still kind of tell it's not real but it's when it's in motion you can yeah if it's a still and you, i mean if it's a still and you were just having a glance and look at it you yeah, you, be able to tell. yeah like you if you really tell. looked at it then you could tell but yeah it's, it's Jesus. yeah they're getting very close they're getting very close and that is that is exciting um that, that potentially the new graphics cards from nvidia <clears throat> are, are going to potentially be able to um have the use of ray tracing as well because I know they're talking about uh, in the new Metro game they showed it off in that as well the use of ray tracing using oh, right. um, some sample that Nvidia let them have right okay have a cool. hold of. wow that um, could be pretty so, so we're not that far away mm. actually from potentially getting this this is going to be something that's going to be over the next few years let's put it this way by the next console generation I imagine we'll definitely have yeah, ray tracing is a regular thing in games, and games by that point are just going to look <laughs> yeah. insane, phenomenal. Yeah. Um, so the the other thing coming out of Epic, um, obviously Epic are the um, the devs behind Fortnite, which is obviously you know there's no no unless you've been living under a rock, you know that Fortnite's doing the business at the moment. Um, but the, because because of that, their um, PS4 PC MOBA Paragon they decided to shut it down because it wasn't that was not doing the business <laughs> and they kind no. of wanted to pump everything into Fortnite so because they've shut Paragon down they've actually made all of the assets available um, available to, for free oh okay so all the Didn't Paragon assets which you know there's a hefty chunk of content there you got all the characters and all the environmental stuff and I mean on here this it's saying on here there's 12 million pound 12 million dollars worth of paragon assets i'm not quite sure how they're getting to that figure but yeah they've made it they've made it free all the paragon assets are free available for free to all developers so you can if anything that is scary of how much money they're clearly making off of fortnite right now (laughs) yeah they're just like have 12 million dollars worth of stuff for free everybody here you go yeah i mean that's a lot of man hours that's gone into um yeah. It shows you how much. And that game kind of fell to the wayside. Like, I, yeah. I, I've never even really read up about it. I, or I haven't played it. Nothing like Weirdly, that. Weirdly, it was it's, it was one of the few games that I did actually play on my PS4, like, from time to time. Oh, really? Yeah. It was. Um, did you like it? It was okay. I mean, it's, <laughs> okay. Not, it's, not, it's not exactly, you know, glowing praise. Like, 
it was alright. The games, it did have a lot of problems. Like, the games were quite slow. Um, and they, they really kind of... Even though it was a MOBA, the games were probably longer than they needed to be. Um, yeah. And yeah, there's all sorts of issues with it. And there's sort of progression and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I I had a bit of fun with it at one time. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not surprised it kind of shut down. It kind of it popped up when everybody and their dog was doing mobas, as everybody is trying to do now, do battle royale games. So it's, battle it's royale games, exactly. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's, yeah. yeah, it's amazing the trends. Like, it's, yeah, exactly. Another thing at GDC as well was uh, obviously they talk about the, uh, I guess the shaky scenario uh, <clears throat> of VR at the moment and how. Yeah. I, I think Valve. Um, just from reading as well, we're, we're banking on VR a little bit, and it's not really performing as expected. Which is just leads onto something else I was reading today from Valve, where they were talking about taking away from the storefront uh, the stuff for Steam machines. Yeah, I saw that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously that didn't really go to plan for them either, um, and I don't think VR is really going to plan. But a lot of people, I remember when Oculus was blowing up, and everybody thought it was going to be this this huge thing. Yeah. And it, we're still we're just still not there are we? i think really? everyone thought it was oculus was like the one because yeah. everyone was pumping so much money into it exactly <laughs> it exactly was, that thing was no. selling like crazy like on on kickstarter and stuff like that and and yeah it just it, the vr has just not gone the way um i think everybody was kind of expecting obviously shit valve by the sounds of it gdc was just kind of like uh yeah but look how good steam is <laughs> um <laughs> Don't worry about our other stuff. Steam's great. Like, Look, all Valve, right all Valve needs to do is make Half Life Three. Correct. That's all anybody do you wants know what they them need to, do. to do. They could, do you know what they, need they to could do? just they shut, make... shut Steam down. Just make Half Life Three, and everyone would be happy. But like, we're closing Steam today. Half Life Three's out. Yeah, that's it. Fuck. That's it. What they need to do is make that. They need to make Portal Three, and they need to make Left 4 Dead Three. They need to make yeah, all we... those prequels. Now the free free calls. Yeah, we need them. They need Team to do Fortress half free. Four need... free calls. <laughs> Team Fortress Three. I wrote Team Fortress Two. That was a long time coming. Jesus. Well, yeah, that, that took a long time. I I remember going to. I can't even remember what it was called. There was there was a. It was a time when there was. There was like a mini E3 when there was in dinosaurs. Yeah, it, probably, it was quite. It was like that long ago. Uh, th there was a time when there was a, like, it was like London's version of E3 that was held held right. at Earl's Court, and I can't remember what the hell it was called, but it was a long time ago. And I remember going to see the guys. One, of the, I went and met one of the developers from Gearbox who were working okay. on Team Fortress Two, um, and it was. This was a time when Team Fortress 2 was still like a proper military shooter. <laughs> yeah, that changed. Yeah, that so that's telling you how long. I think this, this, well, I this must have the been original Team Fortress. This must have been after Half Life One came out. This this wasn't even like Half Life Two territory. This was like before that. Just yeah, so Team Fortress like in between. Yeah, Team Team Fortress Two was talked about for a long time. Long. Everyone thought it was dead for like a good few years, and then it kind of yeah came back as this cartoony, cartoonified thing. But anyway, yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. I really enjoyed Team Fortress. So I thought it was good. Yeah, no, it was a great game. Yeah, really yeah, good. It was good. Um, so, anything else? Anything else you want to touch on? Or? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, Switch no. is doing just, well with indies and like ports yeah, of other games. Yeah, we spoke about that. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. We so know that's doing good. That's GDC. That is GDC, and that is pretty much the news. Uh, so the news? Well, basically, well, actually, there's one. Other, well, there's two other little tidbits. There's, 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 there's two, two things. We've been going a while though. That's all I'm worried about. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, so, right. One thing we we should talk about because we yes. we like to talk about microtransactions on this this podcast. And Shadow of War is doing a very interesting thing, and it is removing out of nowhere all of its microtransactions. It's just getting rid of them. Yeah. Which is I mean, 
a lot of very cynical people on the internet think this is just a ploy for publicity and the fact that a game of the year edition or what it will you know definitive They've edition got a DLC will be coming out really soon. Yeah, exactly. So they're like <laughs> no like they've had their six months or whatever, like nobody's buying the microtransactions anymore, so we'll remove them. Let's focus on DLC. Get a bit yeah. of publicity because we're removing them even though nobody's buying them. Um yeah. Yeah, but yeah. It's, I mean, it does stink of that a little bit, doesn't it? It's so. it's good that they're removing them. Don't get me wrong, and you know, hopefully, people won't add them in the future. Um, yeah, but, I mean, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Like I say, I'm, we've spoke about it to 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 the point of verbatim, I guess. But uh, I'm fine with them if they're just for cosmetics and things like that. If they're not, you're gonna yeah. Be and I, my my, my go to is so. my go to is always Overwatch. I have no problem yeah. with the loot boxes in Overwatch. They are, they are the way it should be done. They're like, and the, the way I always describe it is, if you spend a thousand pounds on loot boxes in Overwatch and you spent uh, against and you're playing against somebody who spent nothing, your gameplay experience is identical. And identical, that's, exactly. That's exactly the way it should that. be. Exactly yeah. that. Exactly that. Hundred percent. That's that. That's what I totally agree with as well. Um, so yeah, no, they're they're doing that. They're getting rid of their microtransactions. It's probably just to make you buy the DLC. But there you go. Um, <laughs> Assassin's Creed is getting an update as well, which we spoke about, which is quite interesting. Um, it's just for PC though. This one, it's, it's giving you the uh, what's it called, the Animus Optimizer or something like that. What? Yeah, the Animus. Animus cheat or cheat yeah. hacks. The Animus. Sorry, I'm I'm getting a visitor. <laughs> Totally if you're on my own. What am I supposed to do? All right, I'll talk talk amongst myself. Come back, as I'm back. Sorry about that. It's all right. Um, I, yeah. ramb- I rambled to myself. This is the awkward seconds. thing when you still live at home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, all Animus control panels. Uh, so that is a new update that's coming to Assassin's Creed. Allows uh, you to mess. All sorts of crazy shit. Yeah. Um, so you can you can basically change your movement speed you can change how many animals follow you you can change how fast you can swim you can change how fast you can breathe underwater so basically there's, the internet is going to get flooded with fucking crazy videos of mad shit happening in Assassin's Creed they've, had, they've um, done a lot of really good stuff with Assassin's Creed I've been really impressed with how they've handled it yeah, like my hat's like, off to them because they've yeah. done fucking they've done, they've done a complete 180 with this game yeah um, and yeah they're just they've with really, stuff. really, like the DLC is solid. For, I mean, I yeah, haven't played I mean, it yet, but everything I've read about it is it's solid. They've the, consistently updated it. Um, yeah, the like the Discovery like Tour, really like the free Discovery Tour thing, was a really exactly. nice touch. Um, exactly. Yeah, so, they, and like it, again, like the game had microtransactions in it, but unless they told you, you probably wouldn't notice. Like they're so like stuffed in the background. Like, it was, yeah, it was very much an afterthought. Yeah, that's um, it. Yeah, no, that's so, um, exactly. it's, it's, it, I mean, they, I think they called it uh, like, like, what they call it? it's like to speed up the game or something. Um, it, that was what they, how they sort of sold it is that anything you bought was just to speed up your experience if you wanted to have more uh, ability points quicker and stuff like that. That was just that, that was all it was there for. And I agree, that's the way. It, that's where it should be. You don't like if you want them, you can have them. If you don't want them, then you know you're still going to have just as much fun. It's going to be just the same game. So yeah. it's the way it should be. Uh, last thing on the news, which is going to segue nicely to how we're going to end this week's episode. Um, <laughs> and so it was announced a long time ago. Uh, yeah, but it might have been the, was it E3 last year? Maybe maybe it's some. I think so. It's around that like. time. It's like June, July last year. It's been a long fucking time anyway. Yeah. That they announced. Um, but the Duke controller, which is the old school, huge original <laughs> Xbox controller, huge is, is the word. Reborn, yeah, huge is definitely the word. It's being reborn. It's still wired, which amazes me. Um, why? And it's coming out for. I have no idea. Why wouldn't because, you do a wireless version? Why? Why? Because the original Xbox had that really genius cable where it had like that snaggy bit. Oh, remember? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like. If you fucking ran Tripped. away from your console, it would it would fucking it just snap out? Yeah, yeah. Smash your console. I remember that. Yeah, that was clever. That was clever shit. Like the the other like consoles at the time didn't should have followed that, and they didn't. But there you go. Um, so it's wired, but it's got an LCD screen in the middle, or should I say, it's got an OLED screen in the middle of it. Oh, does it? I didn't does, know that. It does. But it doesn't do anything. <laughs> 
All it does is show the original Xbox logo, and you know the, how the original Xbox started up and it had that funky gear, and then the goo would come in the middle. Oh, uh, yeah. It just does that on repeat in the middle of it, basically. So it's just a funky little <laughs> that thing. Seems, that seems worth it. Yeah, they, they include, they've included... It must do something original. else. It doesn't. It's it literally must that. Do. It, it shows the logo. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> they put an OLED so, screen in it just to run an animation. It's because... I don't, I, don't, I don't know about you, but when the original Xbox car, I know me and my friend all wished that they had the, sim- the thing similar to, like, the Dreamcast. Remember the Dreamcast memory cards used to go in your oh, pad? Oh, slot in the middle, yeah, the yeah. Screen, right? And your memory card used to go in the top of the pad on the original. You, oh, could you put a memory card on the top? I can't remember. I, don't I might know. be lying. Whatever, it doesn't matter. But, like, they had all this wasted space in the middle, and they could have had a fucking screen there. And, like, Microsoft, like, were involved in developing that original pad and stuff like that. So, you know, we, everybody wanted a screen. So now we've got a screen that doesn't do anything. <laughs> doesn't but do it's, anything. It's, but it's, it's a screen, at least. We've got a screen. So. Yay. Um, but it's got bumper buttons. You never used to have bumpers. It's got They look really awkwardly placed Does because of the design of the pad. Yeah, they have. It's like it's like on the top of the back. It looks. It looks like you kind of have to push inwards. I'm now looking around my room to see if I. I don't think I've got any. I'm sure I might. I might have one of the old controllers somewhere. Yeah, the Duke didn't have cupboard. bumpers. It had black and white. They were your other button. Oh yeah, on the front. It's got yeah. the black and white buttons as well, but it's got bumpers. So if you play an original Xbox games, you've right. still got black and white to press, but the rest is on the bump. If you play. A, if you want to play an Xbox One game on it, you can use Bumper. You can use it on PC as well. Um, and yeah, 70 quid though. 70 yeah, quid. It's, it's a bit steep for a chunky retro controller. Sem- I was going to say, 70 quid for a slice of nostalgia. It's, that's a lot, right? Yeah, that is a lot. I, I'm price. not I'm not going to be rushing to the shops for one of them, I don't think. No, it, well, it, it is a limited run thing. Um, everything uh, is... Uh, so it's a collector's... It is a collector's thing. It, they are serial numbered. Everything has its own unique thing. It is a limited amount. I how, don't know how, how long how, I, was yeah. say, I don't know how limited they are, but by the looks of it, the other day when I was looking, uh, Game was selling it in the UK and GameSpot are selling it in the States, but I have seen it listed on other sites in the UK. It's on Amazon and things like that as well. So I don't know how limited mm. limited is, but it's it's limited. Um, so <clears> I have no idea. But still don't want It's one. coming out. I just still don't want one. <laughs> I kind of do. I must admit, I do because I've I, got I, an I elite. What, what, I've got an elite. I don't need a chunky I, I, bit of plastic yeah. with a I mean, useless I, I screen on it. I have an elite as well, but I kind of want it because I, I did love the Duke for seventy quid. Yeah. It puts me off a little bit. So uh, maybe if it was Christmas or something, I'd be like, someone want Christmas. <laughs> that'd be, that'd I mean, nice it's one. a it's a fun little thing for them to do, but I, yeah. yeah, I mean, it sounds like yeah. it's aimed at. A collectible market. Well, it's not. For, it's it's Microsoft endorsed, but it's not by them. It's by um. Oh, oh really? Name. Yeah, so it's another. It's a retro pad company. Oh, so it's not a first now. party. No, 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 no. Okay. It's not, not a first party thing. It's, um, God, why am I not going to remember? Hyperkin, that's it. Hyperkin, that's right? The company are making it. Um, okay. it, I, mean, I mean, it's like those pads you get where it's, it's like officially licensed. Yeah, so yeah, it is yeah. an officially licensed thing, but um, obviously you've got your headphone jack on it and stuff like that as well if you want to plug mine. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's certainly quick. But segwaying off of Segway. that, Segway. Segway. Even though we've already gone for quite a while, let's just have a little let's see how how we how we doing. I'll put oh, out doing a tweet. We're, we've just we've just kind of rolled over an hour, so we're, 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 oh, we can right. sneak, we can sneak we can sneak this in. We've got some time to sneak this in then. But I'll put out a little tweet earlier on that we're obviously recording the podcast tonight. Uh, and we're, we're talking about what people's favourite controllers are or what they think are the best controllers ever. Um, so off the back of the, this little Duke announcement, we thought it would be a nice little topic yeah. to talk well, about. Well, what, what's your, so, let's start with your favourite controller. Start with my favourite controller. Well, my favourite is... It's, it's an awkward topic because I, I, I've played pretty much on every control from ever but my favourite is probably now my Elite controller which is my Xbox One controller because mm-hmm. for me I actually think it's it's the perfect pad I mean I don't think there's any other pad out or has been out prior to that that's better than that controller mm-hmm. um, 
obviously I say the Elite, the Xbox One controller in general, I think is the is the best. Yeah, they got your design just, layout. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that just just the design of it, the comfort, the the stick layout, the D pad, um, trigger placement, the bumper placement for me, it's just it's just it's just perfect. Like I don't think hmm. there's anything more comfortable out. Um, a lot See, of people like the PS4 pad, but for me, it's not nowhere near as comfortable. Yeah, I I, I mean personally, I've never again. It's probably having never really had the sort of um, PlayStation consoles, but I always found like it's those weird stalks on the PlayStation pads that I've always felt were just a little bit too short and then made them I always found them slightly awkward to hold. Like the dual like the dual shock. The yeah. sort of traditional yeah, dual a, shock is very... it's ever so slightly too small. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's very co- it's a co- it's a claustrophobic pad, isn't it? Because mm. like the sticks are so that's what does my head in especially if you're playing shooters. Shooters is the type of game that I notice it the most. Is it, it's just, they're just too close. Like just get the, like the thumbstick placement. Obviously on the Xbox, it's like you can see my thumbs. So, <laughs> it's whatever. But obviously you got one up and one down. Yeah, and it's just much more. You know, you got natural, that distance, yeah. and it's yeah, much more natural. Um, I mean, for me, I was gonna say for me, the okay. sort of obviously you, you know you mentioned the Elite. It's an amazing pad, but like for a kind of slightly you know I'm you know unashamedly an Xbox fanboy. Um, yeah. As anybody who listens to this podcast will know, uh, <laughs> and for me, from like a nostalgia point of view, actually, the 360 pad, like, remember, yeah, a, a lot of fond memories of that pad. It was, um, yeah, it served me well, and it was like, yeah, that was, that was kind of. I really think, obviously, transitioning from the Duke to the 360 pad, they really kind of knocked it out of the park in terms of the the design and kind of getting it right, um, kind of oh, like definitely. the changes I- they made. Um, so yeah, I, I would I would hold definitely hold the 360 pad. I was going to say that was kind of the nice evolution there because mm. obviously Microsoft, as we just mentioned a minute ago, were were involved with the development of like the Dreamcast and things like that, and the Dreamcast controller is very much similar to the Duke. Yeah, that's true. Actually, um, yeah, it's very similar to the Duke. And then the Duke obviously came out, and people complained it was too big. And then they made that S controller. I don't know if you remember that on the original Xbox that. as well. That had a very a slightly smaller um, S controller, they called it, okay. um, which was a bit more in the. Give it a quick Google because um, <laughs> it's, it's it's a lot different. It's a lot different to the Duke. It's totally completely different controller. Um, so that then evolved into what they brought out on 360, which is the 360 controller. And that's what I was going to say about the Xbox One pad as well. Is that that yeah. 360 controller was the real foundation for the perfection, in yeah. my opinion. That is the Xbox One controller. Yeah, it really. The, yeah, the, the Xbox One controller feels is is definitely like a, the next step from the three. Yeah. It's like it wasn't like massively different, but it was just different enough. It's just different enough to, but but improved as well. Yeah, I think because not the, yeah I, not I, just I, not just changed because like oh we're doing a new controller. It's like refined. Yeah, yeah, that's it, and I think that's what separated um, uh, PlayStation a bit this generation from from the xbox in their or based on controllers anyway is that their controller felt like it had changes for the sake of change a bit yeah because it evolved but it it didn't feel like a uh like a natural evolution it, it just felt like it was i don't know something's just not quite right with the ps4 controller i think like right. just the the stick placement and stuff like that it's like if they were actually trying to evolve it a bit, they'd have, they'd have swapped the formula up more than they did. Right, I mean, all yeah, they did was was sort of convex the uh, the like the the like they made it sort of more of like cylindrical, didn't they? Like, like the mm. edge of the pad and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like for me, they just, like I don't know why they just didn't think like right, okay, like fuck the original design, let's <laughs> completely change the pad. Um, I mean, they're not, they're known for being wild. I mean, look at that boomerang thing we nearly got on PS3. <laughs> you know, like that, they're nearly going to make that shit. So, like, why don't they just yeah. change the PS4 pad a bit more, change the fun placement and stuff like that. But then I guess they don't want to be that, that copycat of, of uh, Xbox, Most, yeah. I guess. I mean, I just want to give a quick shout-out, I'm conscious of time, but I just want to give a quick shout-out to the Wii, the original Wii controller, because that yeah. was, like, such a massive departure from gaming controllers in general and with like a really kind of 
nice intention behind it that anybody like gamer or not would be able to pick up and use it um because like completely changing the layout and the shape of it um i thought that was that was a really clever sort of design decision decision by them oh definitely i mean the code name for that console was apt for that controller <clears throat> like nintendo revolution like that was yeah. legit revolution like there was nothing else like that at all um i mean the fact that you know the fact that it was designed to sort of mimic a tv remote that everybody recognizes and uses but then you could turn it sideways and use it as a little joypad was quite a, it was it was a very yeah. cleverly thought out bit of kit i mean it's, it's they, they're still doing that stuff now obviously with the switch with the joy cons and stuff like that yeah. like they nintendo deserve all sorts of props and it's something i noticed today from tweets so i'll read some tweets in a minute before we go off um but like from tweets as well people mentioning the gamecube controller as well as being yeah yeah effort. Um, which that was a very a, different controller. Yeah, that was a funky looking beast. Wasn't yeah, it? I mean, you had the analog stick and then you had that C stick, which was really different. Like that was not like a normal analog stick at all. Mm. Um, and obviously, you didn't have triggers on that. You had like those uh, pressure sensitive, like uh, uh, like well, I guess left trigger, right trigger, but they weren't triggers as such. They sort of went in, like down rather than around, like a trigger does. Um, so yeah, it was, that was a, that was a really different controller. It was one of my, to be fair, I really enjoyed the the, the Wii the Wii controllers, GameCube controllers, the uh, Wave Bird as well, which was like the first big, well, one of the big threes to do a wireless pad, which is what they oh, released right, their yeah. official Wave Bird pad, where you used to clip the little dongle in the front and then you oh, connect okay, your pad. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, like Nintendo were the first to jump on that bandwagon and actually give you an official wireless controller. Um, so that was different and I want to give a shout out as well to the Switch Elite controller like speaking of Sony not wanting to copy Microsoft like Nintendo went fuck it with our pro <laughs> controller we're just going to give you something that's basically an Xbox pad and I tell you what that is one of the most comfortable controllers out actually the, the Elite controller for the Switch I don't know if you've ever used one that is a great controller not... no it is a very nice control um, next time I see you I'll probably have my Elite <laughs> controller with me because I'm normally over Perry oh, so I'll probably shall... have my Elite controller you have to have a little feel it's I should check it out. very very comfortable controller um, shall I read some tweets? Do read it. Some tweets? Let's read some tweets. Let me get onto our Twitter because I'm on my own. No good to us. <laughs> uh, I am Fumbles O'Brien. Uh, Mr. Burger, uh, which oh. is a, another YouTube sensation. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to the Sega Mega Drive because I didn't uh, give it a shout out. So. Sega Mega Drive for me though, I don't, I don't think it, it like that didn't break the mold that much really. You know, yeah. it had fucking three buttons and a D-pad. Like yeah. I can't say it's like one of the best controllers ever. <laughs> I remember it, but yeah, it was, it was, it wasn't. Again, it wasn't amazing, but yeah. It was probably better than the NES controller, I guess, because the NES yeah. controller was like a brick, whereas this was a bit more comfortable to the hand, I guess. Yeah, like, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, who else have we got? Rich, who was our guest? Rich Atkinson, who was our guest a couple of weeks back. Uh, he says his favourite controller is GameCube, which does not shock me because that boy <laughs> loves Nintendo. Yeah, that, that he comes, works for a magazine. Right. Comes as no surprise. He says the oversized buttons were great. Uh, the mound was pretty much perfect too. I guess it, the mound? What's the, oh, am I forgetting something? The mound? Don't Whatever. Uh, the only downside was the short ass cable. Very true because the fucking cable and those <laughs> controls were so small. Like, it was like Nintendo wanted you to sit in the TV with those pads. <laughs> it's immersive. Like, you couldn't... Yeah, pretty. Yeah, yeah. They weren't like they weren't like Xbox with that dangly bit that would disconnect. Like you had to sit <laughs> in your TV to play that machine. Um, uh, Brad Manning's tweeted in saying there are certain controllers that I love. GameCube being one. Fond memories of playing countless hours of Luigi's Mansions with that pad. But others just changed the game. PS One DualShock with the sweet analogs. Then you look at what Free Three Sixty Pad did. And he says, so in summary, top three, PS1, DualShock being number one, number two was GameCube, number three was Xbox, wow. because it's... That, see, that uh, is the thing, there, there, the basic there, controllers. There are people who do love the DualShock, like, it's people, you know, it's a classic controller design, and people really love yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. So well, to be fair, we should, probably should just give that a bit of a shout out, actually, because we haven't actually spoke about it in the controls we were talking about, but the original DualShock was was like a game changer really that, that mm. set the foundation for what Microsoft yeah. would later go on to do yeah, with their course, packs yeah. and stuff like that um, I mean there was nothing else out I mean obviously you had the N64 which had a stick yeah. um, but it wasn't an analog stick in the sense of um, or having two sticks I mean if you wanted to play GoldenEye with two sticks you had to have two pads so <laughs> um, 
which was I, I never played. Did you ever play Goldeneye like that? No, no. You because you could legit play Goldeneye like that. You could have two N64 pads. Um, so you had two sticks, and then obviously you had the triggers on the back. That's insane. Yeah, I've never played like that. I, I actually <laughs> want to kind of want to get my N64 out and give it a go because I've never done it. Um, so yeah, obviously like PS1, that was that was game changing. Obviously, that started with just the D-pad, didn't mm. it? And then later on, they were like, "Oh, here you go, here's a controller with two sticks on it." And yeah, it's you know, the, it's the, the benchmark history, now, isn't it? You know, two two sticks is the that's what it is. If you think of a controller these days, it's, that's it. Well, yeah, I mean that's the way it has to be for anything which has you know you shift in a camera perspective and stuff like that, and you want to have that motion at the same time. You yeah. need those two sticks. So um, yeah, I mean Sony really sort of launched off how how we control games really um to the mainstream I, I think no one's to say that nintendo wouldn't have later on come on with that with gamecube and stuff like that themselves but um they only really started the trend with their their console to be honest yeah. so we're well, saying that dreamcast in the middle i guess Actually, <laughs> no i like dreamcast only had one stick only had one stick so uh yeah it's only really with trailblazers i guess yeah. and the whole console scheme yeah very much so Anyway, we need to wrap this up because we're approaching. We're approaching long... danger levels of timing. Yeah. Ah, uh, well, whew, it's been a jam-packed episode. Yeah, we covered. We covered a lot. We, we spoke about a lot. Uh it's been a hell of a time. Next week, right? I'll, I'll quickly say what we're doing next week, and then you can do the social stuff, and then we'll go. Right. Next okay. week, uh, we're going to be doing. Well, the podcast is going to be a day later than usual because on Wednesday. Uh, out of some some random divine intervention, we are we've been invited to the premiere of the Rampage movie featuring The Rock. The fucking Rock. <laughs> Sorry, yes. I'm excited because we could potentially there is high potential that one we will see The Rock and two potentially be able to interact with The Rock. <laughs> yeah, which blows my tiny mind. So yeah, so that's that's on the Wednesday night. So when we would normally do the podcast, we're going to be chill, chilling with the Rock, and then yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll do the podcast on Thursday. So yeah, it's going to be a day late next week, but that's it. So yeah, hopefully we'll have Perry back. Yeah, he, he should be better Grace by then. I would hope. Talk I would hope he'll be better. Yeah, <laughs> I've I've missed RuneScape this week. Oh, same. It's not. There's not enough RuneScape on this podcast. Damn it. That's not true. I haven't missed it at all. Um, no, <laughs> so yeah that's us for another week another episode uh, join us next week not the same bat time or bat channel because we'll be a day late um, but do all that good stuff if you're watching on YouTube please click down below click subscribe click the notification button so you get all those sweet sweet notifications of when you can get us in your faces and in your ears uh, follow us on all the social media stuff follow us on facebook.com forward slash guys, play, guys playing games follow us on twitter at guys playing g's that's guys playing g's and follow us on Instagram at Guys Playing Games. That's all our official stuff. We've got a website as well, guysplaynggames.com. That gives you all the links to all our goodness. Yeah. Um, and follow us on podcasty apps as well, Stitcher, iTunes, all that good stuff. Uh, and we'll see you next week well, yeah. after we've chilled with the rock. <laughs> Indeed. Toodles. <laughs> Catch you later. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.